Hey guys, Keisha here of Coconut Robot, and today I want to teach you how to make this daffodil. Just in time for spring, sorry about my delay in getting new videos up, but I am back at it, so hopefully there'll be a new one each week from here on out. Um, this daffodil, I just had fun with the petals, making them a bit more realistic, um, and I'm going to show you how I did that. So supplies, my favorite spring-loaded scissor. It's just easier on the hands when you're cutting those strips for your petals. Uh, my favorite curved scissor here is a Havel. I have the links down below. Uh, you can cur cut right to the tip, which is great. And then the same style, same brand of scissor and a straight um, straight blade cutting right to the tip as well. My favorite felt is from a place on Etsy and the link is below and then my handy dandy glue gun. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is cut out strips and from those strips we'll cut our petals. So I'm going to be cutting two strips here that are both an inch and a half wide. Um, I have a ruler there for reference just to help you see what size I'm cutting my petals. And then at the end, I'll use the ruler again to show you the final flower. Um, that way you can adjust if you want to make uh, your daffodil larger, smaller, whatever you'd like. So just using that spring-loaded scissor, I'm simply going to cut those strips. And then from there, we'll go on to cut our petals. Now we're going to be cutting out the petals and the um, rectangles needed for that center part of the daffodil. I'm doing this a little bit differently than I do my other flowers. Um, we're going to be using the thickness of our strip for the width of the petals, not the length like I typically do. So the first one there is going to be for the center, and I cut that about three inches. Um, and then each of the additional petal pieces, I'm cutting anywhere between an inch and a half to two inches. Um, and then that little centerpiece we're going to be using um, as the stamen of the flower. So um, cutting those, like I said, nice way to do is if you get the benzy felt, you have the inch and a half strip, you're going to cut that in half, and then each of those sections in half, and those are going to be your petals. Um, and then instead of cutting the one of the four sections in half, you're going to cut that a little bit longer, as you can see there for the center, with that tiny strip at the end for the stamen. So you have your petal pieces, your center piece, and your stamen piece. I think it's called a stamen. I need to go back to science. I'm not totally sure. So if I got that wrong, be kind. Okay, so for now, we're going to um, hop right into that center piece of the daffodil, and you're just going to cut along one edge, a super wavy, kind of ruffly, um, look and then I'm going to show you how I kind of take and stretch that out a bit so it fans out. So you can just watch. I use my curved scissor for this and there's really no right or wrong way to do it. We've got our middle section done. Pardon my voice here. I'm recovering from a cold and now we're going to go ahead and cut out our petals. So um, again we've used the width of that strip as the width of our petal and we're just going to curve the bottom and kind of make like a guitar pick type shape here um, and you can add some variation as you can see like I'm doing just to show I don't know a little wear and tear on the petals if you will I just don't like my flowers to look too perfect because then they don't really look like flowers so um, it's fun to kind of figure out how to make them look a little bit more natural by showing some of the the wear and tear and just inconsistencies, I guess, of each individual flower. So just have fun cutting those out, um, adding little torn pieces, um, maybe pointier tips, whatever you want to do. So we have our petals cut and that centerpiece cut, and now we're going to cut the stamen piece. I think it's called the stamen. This is embarrassing. I don't know. I need to go back to science class. Okay, so we're going to chop that. As you can see, I changed my mind. We're going to chop that the, um, what is it, hamburger way? So now I have almost a square, 
um, about three quarters of an inch by probably just under three quarters of an inch, maybe five eighths by three quarters of an inch. And you're just going to make small little slices and we're going to use that to wrap around the wire for that center piece. Just getting it in focus for you um, and cutting those out just like so. So we're going to go ahead and take that center piece and just put a dab of glue at the base and we're going to wrap that around our wire to start the flower. Okay, so this is going to be the trickiest part of the flower. It's not too tricky, but it's just a little bit trickier than maybe the ones in the past. So you're going to kind of gather, see how I'm gathering the base there? I'm showing you without glue, um, but you're going to be adding glue to it. So just watch as I do this. I kind of add a drop of glue at each fold mark. Your hands will probably get burned. <laughs> I'm just warning you. Um, but I promise it'll be worth it. So I just add a drop of glue and then I make that fold and then I'm just going to kind of continue all the way around and then we'll take and pinch that around the wire around the stamen or whatever the heck it's called um, for your flower. Okay, so we have the base pretty much done and you're just going to add a little bit of glue to the edge there and we're going to overlap ever so slightly, pardon my going off screen there. Um, so you're going to just line those up. You don't want them to overlap a ton. Um, we want it to be as seamless looking as possible. You're going to close that up and then kind of add to the gathered part there right at the end. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, your first one might not look like much of a daffodil, but just keep trying. It may look more like a daffodil because it's not perfect. So um, just remember that all of these are kind of learn as you go, tweak as you go, um, and that's the fun and the beauty of it. So um, I'm just kind of closing that up here, and then we're going to go ahead and just slide that right on our floral wire and glue that to our center section. So after you put that centerpiece in place, I just kind of sit and play with um, that edge that you cut scalloped and um, wiggly, I guess. Uh, and I just kind of take and stretch that felt out a little bit just so it fans out and looks a bit more natural and flower-like. So the next five kind of segments that I'm going to show you are five different ways that I just kind of variations that I do to the petals just to make them look a bit more natural. So you could do all five of your petals with one variation. You could do like I did and kind of change it up and make them all a little bit different. You don't have to do any of these. You could have them all just lay a bit flat. It's totally up to you. So um, I'll have them label, labeled one through five and you can go ahead and pause it, rewind um, as you go through and make your petals.
This last petal variation is the most simple and it's my favorite. I really think it made the daffodil look just that much more um, just realistic, giving that little flap um, or bend of the petal. So now we're going to go ahead and attach our petals to that centerpiece that we've created. And as you can see, I'm just going to glue those to the base there. And then we'll end up bending our wire to give um, kind of that 90 degree angle that the daffodil has facing forward, not up. But I like to do that after I build the daffodil. So we'll go ahead and just add those on. We're going to be placing our first three in kind of a triangle formation, like I'm pointing there. And then we'll be placing the second three behind it, um, making another triangle opposite. It'll make sense as you see it, I promise. So I have five petals that I've made the variations to, and then that sixth petal is plain. And you can add them on however you'd like. Again, if all of yours look just like the one that I'm adding now, that's fine too. Um, totally up to you, and I would recommend kind of changing it up if you're doing a, a group of daffodils. It's just going to make it look that much more realistic. So I'm just going to attach those to the base and just continue going with the three and then the three behind it, as you'll see. So this next part is optional. I just think it gives the daffodil a little bit more life and just realism to it. So I'm just making a little small snips along that center portion. And then you're gonna see I take and actually kind of stretch and fan out, um, again, just to make it look a little bit more natural. If you're using a good quality felt, it is difficult to pull apart and stretch it the way I'm doing it. So those little snips, that extra bit that I'm doing definitely helps. So I'm go ahead and just cut a corner off of a green sheet of felt. It's probably about two inches on those side, not the hypotenuse side, so the sides of the triangle. This is probably the trickiest um, that I find to describe how to cut. So as you can see, I'm just taking it on those sides and kind of cutting like a bird shape V, how you'd maybe do a V to show a bird flying in the sky or something like that. You're just gonna cut that out. And then on the hypotenuse side, you're gonna do the same thing. And that's just gonna give us that three-pronged leaf that's the back of a daffodil. I did already go ahead and take a needle nice nose plier and bend my daffodil so it's facing 90 degree angle, 90 facing a 90 degree angle so it's coming out at you instead of up to the sky, just how it is in nature. Um, putting a little hole in the center of that leaf and I'm just going to string that up on my wire and pop that into place with a dab of glue. Um, again, you can call it quits here. This can be the end of your daffodil, or you can go ahead and continue watching and I will show you how I create um, the leaves that come from the base of that stem. And we're going to add a little bit of wire to those leaves so it, you can kind of bend them and mold them a bit and they don't just flop over. So daffodils have a, a leaf that comes from the base, like I just said. So we're going to go ahead and cut a strip that's between like three quarters and an inch wide. And we're going to use a thinner wire to give that leaf a little bit of shape. So um, you can cut one strip if you just like one leaf, but we're going to go ahead and make two here. Now we're just going to go ahead and round the corners of those leaves, giving one end um, a bit more of a point than the other. So you'll just see as I subtly curve those. I apologize for my voice, guys. I am really struggling with this head cold, so um, hopefully my voice gets back to normal here soon. <laughs> so we're just going to do that tip and then curve out the bottom if you'd like as well, or you can leave it flat. And then I'll show you how we'll attach the wire to the center so you can give that leaf a little bit of shape and form as well. So this next step I'm doing with a hot glue gun, I do believe I'm gonna try this again with um, just a regular adhesive that's not heated, just to see if I can just get a little bit cleaner. So. 
you will probably be seeing that video coming soon. But I'm just going to do in little kind of segments here. If you do the whole thing, it tends to dry too quickly. And I'm just going to make a small strip and then um, of glue and then place that wire inside and pinch around it. Um, you're kind of giving that center vein of the leaf and that's where we're going to hide the wire which allows us to then bend it um, and keep it from completely flopping over since it's starting at the very base of your daffodil. So just kind of work in segments there. You're going to have to pinch it a bit. If you have um, little quilt clips or even just clothes pins, you can use that if you'd like. I can, um, I'll put a link below to my favorite quilt clips that work really well with this. Um, you're just going to kind of keep working along until you've completed that on that entire leaf and then any additional leaves you want to do as well. So the best way that I can describe how I attach the leaves to the base of the daffodil is that I have them hug each other. So you're going to take that first one, just clip off any extra wire that you have and stick a little glue in that fold. And we're just going to have that first leaf hug the stem that you've done um, for your daffodil. And I've already bent my daffodil down, you'll see here in a minute, I've just bent the wire down so it's a good 90 degree angle. Um, so it's facing forward like daffodils do and then we're going to clip off the other side and then that other one the other leaf is going to hug the first leaf from the opposite side so I don't know you've got two people hugging with a stem in the middle two leaves hugging whatever so you're going to have those leaves hug right that right there at the base that's going to give you a nice daffodil look you could do some daffodils with two leaves some with one some without whatever I ended up just doing one leaf for this daffodil as you'll see at the end the end Sorry, that was dumb. Um, but here you go. Here's your finished daffodil. Pretty easy, probably a little bit more complicated than the other flowers we've done, but I have confidence that you can do it. Um, I will show you here in a minute with a ruler how big it is so you can adjust your petal sizes and your felt pieces and strips. So it's about four inches, I would say, by, I don't know, another three and a half, and then about one and a half inches deep. So there you have it. Uh, be sure to leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what other flowers you'd like to see and I hope to be getting them out to you weekly again here. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.